Hey, welcome to another lecture. And in this lecture, we are going to discuss about fork system calls. And this fork system call always duplicates the current running process. And in this case, we are taking parent process as the current running process. And when you use fork on the parent process, it will duplicate the process of itself. And it has own process of parent process that it will be parent. And if you check the PID, they will be always in difference of one integer and it, it is a general case but not always. So if you use fork again on the duplicate process and the parent process, it will create again its own processes. Now child1 will create a child2 duplicate process and process itself. Similarly, the parent process will create a child3 and the process itself. Till now, there are the total three child processes has been created and one parent process. With respect to the parent, there are only two child. One is this child one and one is this child three. You can see the tree and you can mention there are two child process of parent and one grandchild of the parent and one parent process itself. Let's move to the next slide and let's have some fun with fork. The first condition of the fork is a total number of processes created. That will be 2 to the power n where n is the number of times the fork has been used continuously. And second is a total number of child process. It will be always 2 to the power n minus 1. And the next condition is whenever you use the fork, the necessary condition is child process must terminate first. If it is not terminated first, then there are few processes which will be hidden. They will create unnecessary execution effects. The order of execution affects heavily. Whenever the parent process has been executed at first, leaving child process in a state of execution, then there will be no parent left for the child. So the child will be orphaned. And so we call as this process orphan process. And we will discuss about zombie process, orphan process in the coming lectures. Until that, you just remember, if we don't terminate the child process first, it will create unnecessary hidden process and affects execution order and often processes or zombie processes will be created. To avoid that, we use wait and sleep. So wait function will tell to wait the parent so that the child process can be executed at first. Let's move to the practical section where you can understand how the weight is being affected and what happens when we don't use a weight. Let's dive into the practical. In this practical session, we already know how to create files. Use touch and create .c file and then copy these header files. Now just let's make a small code program. Let's see how many children has been created and after that I'm going to tell you when is parent process created and when is child process created and what conditions those are created. Use fork then print f i Now just absorb how many times does it print the function? We have used one fork call. Now, so we have used one fork call. It must print two times. Let's just see how many times it's printing. It must print two times. So it has printed high two times. One is here and one is here and now let's just check what values does the file is giving so now we will differentiate 
parent process and the child process. So the fork call returns the integer value. Let's initialize the integer i and check what values does it return in every execution. There will be only two execution. Obviously, one is parent and one is child. And now just execute. Give us new line so that we don't confuse. Now let's run the program. So now we have written high 3261 and high 0. And now if you observe, this high 0 is a child process. Whenever the child process is created, the fork will return integer value 0. And whenever the parent process, that will be positive number, it will be non-negative and it will be greater than 0. And if there is any error in creating, then it will return minus 1. Now let's take an example of another process so that we can understand this fork more clearly. Now, as I told, it has created one child and one parent. Now we have known the conditions. It will create child process when it is i equal to 0 and it will create parent process when i is not equal to 0 or i is greater than 0. We can take any condition in this. Now just print. I have told you in the previous, I mean I have told you that you must use a wait function or else the order of execution or the hidden process will be created. Let's just check is it correct or not. Now equal to equal to zero which means the child process and for checking the PID we use get PID function and this is a child process. Child process can have both PID and PPID. PID is the ID of the child and PPID is the parent ID of the child. PID of child 1 and there is only one child just check PID and PPID which means parent process ID. I am going to prove you if you don't use wait then the hidden process will be created and order of execution effects you will get wrong PID when the child is being orphaned. You remember to use these functions and don't forget to put parentheses. Now put else because one is equal to equal to zero and other obviously will be parent. So we need only PID of the parent so that we can check the child ID, I mean child parent ID must be the PID of parent. I mean the child PPID must be the PID of parent because PID means the ID of the process and parent ID will always stand above the child process. So the parent PID of the child will be the ID which is about the child which is obviously the parent and the parent has the ID of P get PID. Now just check is it working fine or not. And sorry about that uh, we didn't save the file. Save the file don't forget it. Now we compile again that file. Now check. We didn't get the PPID of the parent. See the PID of parent is 3318. But the child is linking to some other ID which is not the parent that we have created. And here we have having the zombie process or orphan process of a getting some type of hidden processes. We will talk about the hidden process in the later sections but just remember there are hidden processes which will affect our execution. So to get rid of this use wait call in, in the parent section. And this is the parent process as we talked. Now 
use the wait. Now, how many times you must wait? How many times you must use wait in the parent class? I mean, if there are two child process in the parent, then you must wait for two processes to finish. So you will use wait two times in the parent if it must create two child processes. If you are just waiting for one child process to finish, then you will use only wait. And we will not use this wait call in the child until it, is, it also becomes a parent of some other child. So now let's just execute and see the difference while we are using wait and while we are not using the wait. Now you can check the difference. This time we got PID 3366 of the parent process and we got child PPID also 3366 which tells us the parent of the child is 3366. So hence prove that we need wait condition so that we can tell the parent that the child must finish first and then you can continue with the execution. So that's it for today. If you guys like the video, please give a subscribe. And if you have any doubts, give a comment in the comment section. Meet you in the next video. Till then, bye bye.